All right, so uh, welcome to this week's governance call. This is now NFTX's 10th. So uh, we've been up and running for at least 10 weeks now with public governance. Uh, thank you for participating. And we're now gonna try and hire even more people because we have active contributors and it's been a interesting journey. And I think it's been useful to see all the different use cases uh, that have been explored at NFT Hack as well. So yeah, uh, Alex, if you have something more to say. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I just wanted to jump in and reiterate for anyone who's here or watching later um, that, you know, we're meeting like every morning we have standups um, and we're crunching out a lot of stuff and we're often like arguing and getting really into nitty gritty. So the governance meeting, um, it's mostly like a chance for us to let people know what's been going on. And if people have questions, um, they can come and ask and a chance for us to discuss things. So yeah, I just don't want people um, assuming that it just, if we have like a governance meeting, which isn't very exciting, that not much is going on that week. Um, often we will even like touch base with each other immediately after the governance meeting. So yeah, there is a lot happening. Um, we're building like crazy. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about getting V2 out. So uh, I'll pass it back to Finesse or Chop. Uh, yeah, I can uh, pass it straight to Chop. Uh, he's going to okay. go with uh, the weekend review. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, cool. We, we don't have many people here, so I don't think there's any like specific points of discussion. OK, so. cool. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, start with the weekend in review. Uh, short introduction. I always do this during the governance call just to uh, go over all the highest touch topics that happened last week uh, so that everybody is up to date. Uh, for those that didn't read the blog, uh, this is like a blog post that we release every Monday uh, or uh, yeah, every Monday, uh, just catching up on what happened last week. So in last week's week in review or this week's one uh, touching last week, uh, we've covered a lot of points actually. Uh, one, the first one is that we launched a few additional funds. The biggest one being the Ether Cards uh, Fund. Uh, we launched that in line with their public launch, uh, actually a bit earlier uh, before they launched publicly uh, or public sale. Uh, so that's been uh, going fairly well. It's not that huge, uh, but it's, it's, it's growing slowly. Uh, so that's nice. Then the other ones are Alpaca City, Crypto Art, and Chubbies, and a bunch of others that uh, are community created. Uh, just, just as a reminder, setting up a fund isn't in the total control of the DAO. So anybody can actually create NFT index funds on NFTX. Uh, you don't need our help. Uh, you can have our help if you need it. Uh, like if you if you don't know how to operate on EtherScan and all that sort of stuff uh just feel free to ask me or uh, alex or anyone that's tagged as a contributor uh to help you out and uh we can definitely do that um then the second topic is the play index uh that's a collaboration i've been working on with PyDAO uh over the last few weeks we've worked together to upgrade their original play token which was very uh, game centric, gaming centric. That's also why it's originally called game or play. Uh, we've upgraded that a bit uh, to include more than just gaming NFTs. Uh, so I propose to add some uh, governance tokens, including NFTX, of course, uh, and also NFT in uh, indices. Uh, so uh, we've started off with adding Mask, uh, the Hash Mask uh, NFTX fund, and Punk Basic. So the CryptoPunks fund, uh, it's launched already. So uh, in the in the blog post, it talks about uh, a teaser, but it's already uh, launched yesterday. Uh, so they're super fast, uh, and that's great. So if you want to have exposure uh, on a broad set of NFT uh, like uh, yeah governance tokens, that's the way to go. I'm also working with other similar projects to PyDAO. Uh, so Indexed is one that surfaced a few weeks ago uh, where I made a proposal. Uh, we're working on that, but we need a bit more liquidity on the uh, Uniswap side and also need more 
of our indexes to be live uh, in general, like the, the autogly uh, autoglyphs one and XE one are all part of that one. Um, then there's power pool and there is uh, index scope, uh, which I'm also working together with all similar to the play uh, index, but different uh, exposure. So essentially we're getting integrated with all of them, uh, which is cool, I think. Uh, then the next topic is NFT hack that's been uh, happening over past weekends and a few days before that. It's an ETH global event that we sponsored uh, as one of the main sponsors. Uh, we participated there on multiple levels. So we, um, Alex did a few workshops, I think two uh, live on YouTube. You can watch them back, of course, on YouTube if you're interested. And we also sponsored the hackathon itself by providing prizes uh, of which one of the winners, I think, is in this call, uh, if he's still here. So Tio uh, from Bunchy Protocol, uh, congrats on winning. Um, yeah, that's been a, been a great way to get more eyes on what we do and also to help out uh, starting, but also like uh, yeah, more senior people uh, hacking on NFTX. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's the main topics uh, for last week's Week in Review. And I think by going through that, I covered most of my points actually. Uh, so I want to talk about play and NFT hack uh, I just did. Then the last point I wanted to touch base on uh, before we go into the governance talks is that we have been talking a lot about launching our original funds uh, over the past, uh, like past three or four governance calls. Uh, we finally launched the NFTX slash fund strategy uh, starting with Punk Basic. And we're now in the process of actually uh, launching a bunch of all the other original funds, uh, not all of them, because some have uh, like liquidity crisis on the NFT side of things. So uh, Kitty Founder, for example, there's just one, so it doesn't really make sense to make an index fund for it. Um, but the rest is all going to be launching fairly soon. So that's, uh, that's great news. Uh, and that's my Part for now. Yes. So if uh, people weren't exactly sure or following in the past few weeks, we weren't confident in our liquidity strategy. So we didn't deploy all the NFTs that were raised during the bounties. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we finally decided like, okay, this works and we're going to start pushing it out quickly. Yeah. 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 Just, uh, just as a, like a point, uh, the one of the main things that was blocking us was uh, we wanted to use NFTX from our treasury, uh, which we hold a lot of, of course, as like the liquidity base asset. But due to how AMMs work, uh, they normally don't really have a, a, like altcoins or like yeah, like what NFTX is, like uh, normal issue twenties. They don't use those as base uh, tokens on their UI. So if we would have made that, uh, the UX would have sucked very much uh, for people trying to uh, trade those tokens. But because Sushi is awesome, uh, they uh, enabled NFTX as a base token on their front end. Uh, so now we can use that and not uh, introduce any hurdles for end users, essentially. Yeah, and I think currently buying one punk basic is uh, similar to buying like one punk on OpenSea or on Larva Labs. Mm -hmm. Like the spread would be similar to the spread in between two different NFTs. So yeah. I think that's a, a success right there. Yeah, especially like for people that are uh, looking to get uh, rid of their floor punks, uh, it's, it's way better than uh, secondary markets at the moment. Absolutely. So uh, uh, you can keep... Uh, talking chop. I mean, it's pretty I much all you this time. But yeah, you, you've been uh, pushing out proposals. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, okay. it's your job to cover them, I think. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll continue. Uh, by the way, if anyone has like, uh, remarks or questions, or doesn't understand uh, what I'm talking about, just interfere me. Uh, otherwise, I'll just keep going uh, until someone raises his hand. Uh, okay, so on governance, there's two proposals that I pushed out uh, today and yesterday. 
so uh, XIP5 is one proposal I've been talking about uh, for a few weeks on this call, uh, which was held back a little because of the other proposal, which passed uh, hiring the pro a product squad. Um, originally, this proposal was intending to retroactively grant uh, yeah, do a like a one-off retroactive grant for everybody that helped, uh, including the product squad. But because they got hired as like a core squad, uh, it doesn't make sense to also retroactively grant them because they already got uh, like a salary and a, a signing bonus. Uh, so because of that, I held off a bit. But now we've got uh, got them on board. It makes sense to retroactive grant the people that uh, didn't want a spot or couldn't uh, like take a spot on the core team. Uh, so I've pushed that as a draft proposal at the moment, which basically means uh, rewarding Vasa and Owen, uh, who've been contributing uh, like a crazy amount at the start of NFTX, uh, helping out Alex mainly on uh, protocol. Uh, so I've pushed that live on the forum yesterday. Uh, I'm intending to push that on snapshot tomorrow morning um, if nobody uh, if nobody uh, like uh, tells me not to um, and then we just yeah uh, go through the 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 flow of governance uh, and then the uh, next proposal which is called XRP6 uh, that's a new proposal uh, which I'm super excited to uh, push actually uh, it involves hiring Kiwi uh, I don't know if anybody or ev everybody knows who Kiwi is. He's a very senior, like the, the most senior you can get, I guess, uh, on Solidity. Uh, Solidity dev who works for Prismatic Labs, uh, who's behind ETH2, uh, so the ETH2.0. Um, so he has a lot of experience in Solidity, de Solidity development and also has a lot of experience in building uh developer communities because he's also the founder of crypto devs which is the biggest uh discord for solidity developers or web3 developers in general uh so he's a very good person to assist alex in everything uh especially on v2 and like specking and working that out uh I think he's uh, he's perfect to join NFTX. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just jump in there and yeah, yeah just um, echo that that uh, having Kiwi join the last week has been pretty amazing. Um, huge weight off my shoulders, and uh, I'm already learning a lot. And he's uh, making a lot of great suggestions about gas efficiency and structural changes. So, yeah, really really excited about that. Yeah, so that's uh, I was super excited to push that proposal. Uh, uh, so that's up on the forum too, and I'll just stick to like the governance uh, rules. So it, it it'll be there. Uh, people can push their inputs and their remarks and anything like uh, as a discussion. Uh, and then after it uh, passes the time limit, we'll move it to snapshot. Uh, so we can hopefully grant him and join. He can join the team. Um, that's the proposals that are up at the moment. Then I think, uh, Alex, you had a point also. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to say, Chop, you've been using yeah. the governance uh, process and format perfectly. So that's really good yeah. on you. And the proposals are still, are also coherent. And like you can definitely tell the value added. So as I've mentioned to you before, pretty much all of our proposals have passed with like flying colors. So mm -hmm. it's like 100% nearly every time. So I think that's great. Yeah, and the, the uh, structure is awesome. Like, I, I think it's uh, it's really nice uh, to, to follow this uh, structure you built. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Alex, you had some thoughts on uh, zombie punks and Euler Beats as funds, if yeah. you'd like to share. Um, I'm, I don't know, to be honest. Um, <laughs> uh, no, it's just, um, like, it, it is. it were some thoughts that I was having, and I posted them, and I still... I still think they're generally good thoughts just to, you know, loop everyone in. I was thinking maybe we should use some of our treasury to try and accumulate some more zombies um, and Euler beats perhaps, but uh, it might not be the right time. Um, it's kind of a different direction from everything else we're focused on. Um, and, you know, another thing that I, I was just realized yesterday that I have to get my head around is um, I'm, I'm very much in the mindset of, 
like wanting to use the NFTX treasury to help bootstrap these valuable funds, um, which I think is generally a good strategy. Uh, but it's, I think it's um, secondary to the, the more important strategy, which is us becoming a platform where other holders want to deposit um, their NFTs. Um, so, you know, that, that's the real thing we're going for is we want everyone to say, wow, you know, what a great opportunity for me to make money. I'm going to go deposit my NFTs, you know, supply liquidity. Um, and, you know, it's great if as a DAO, we can take part in that as well and, you know, supply zombies and possibly Euler beats. So I still think it's a good idea, but, um, I don't know. I mean, if other people want to talk about it, basically the idea is to do the same bounty process as was done in December. So we would say like, we're willing to pay this amount of NFTX tokens for a punk zombie or for a Euler beat. Um, and then we would just kind of wait for NFTX to appreciate enough um, that it becomes uh, profitable. Like, but um, like a limit. Yeah, if people have thoughts on that, um, it's cool to chat about, I guess. Like a limit order? essentially yeah on, basically uh, um yeah. so it's like yeah it'd be a limit order on the fun token itself yeah so, um yeah like a otc limit order that you just leave up yeah for, um yeah. and you know that's kind of like that's how we did it with the rays and like you know mm -hmm. some of them filled really quickly and some of them took longer uh, i think you know we have like two zombies basically um we have like 20 autoglyphs and you know those autoglyphs i think are going to be um really valuable to us because mm -hmm. um, it's so difficult for a protocol now to accumulate a large amount of autoglyphs. Um, and we have like 20 of them. Um, I think, you know, maybe if we were to even get more, um, you know, autoglyphs, Yulu beats, CryptoPunks, I really see those as kind of becoming the shelling point um, within yeah. like the collectibles, generative art and um, audio, like respectively. Um, and it's like, you know, we basically locked down CryptoPunks. We got like over a hundred of the basic ones. We've gotten a couple zombies, which is pretty impressive for a DAO. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, if we were to manage to get like two or three more, that would, you know, kind of level us up to the next point. And if we could get like two, three or four Euler beats that could keep a door open for us that might be difficult to open six months yeah. from now. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I think it's a good idea, but at the same time, it's like we're working on so much stuff with B2 that I don't want to, us to get distracted mm -hmm. or to get sidetracked. Um, but yeah, you know, if there's no pushback over the next week, then maybe we can just kind of keep pushing this forward, um, maybe make some suggestions for like the bounty price. Uh, for example, I was saying like, uh, you know, the floor on zombies right now is like around 400 ETH. Um, it's like we could basically lowball and say we're willing to pay 200 ether worth of NFTX for a zombie, and we just wait for NFTX to appreciate like 80% yeah. or something. Um, yeah. So if, you know, if anyone has concerns about that, I, I think that you know the zombies, zombies, Euler beats, and glyphs are kind of like uh, those would be the ones to go after, um, but not too aggressively. You know, we don't want to like. Um, we, our tokens will be valuable in the long term as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's good to diversify and lock that down. I agree. Uh, and especially because it's like on the essentially the OG and the 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 NFTs that have proven value over time. Uh, like if we can absorb those and then use them to LP with or whatever, uh, like I, I think that's a good diversification. Uh, mm -hmm. And also it, it doesn't put us, like we're not absorbing uh, moon cats, for example, because they're like around for three weeks and they might be exactly. in three weeks. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so yeah. so yeah. my that only worry would be with Euler Beats because it's it like a bit shorter of a time frame, but it's so innovating that it kind of counters that. And the other thing I wanted to say is like this is more of a treasury discussion than a strategy mm -hmm. discussion yeah. to me, which leads mm -hmm. into the point that I think we need someone for treasury management. Yeah, which yeah, no, uh, I, I agree. Like, with that will, too. yeah, I think whale uh, price is uh, helping out a lot on that already, uh, and not sure. Uh, 
what the, I, what the I passed this, status I, is. I, I passed this idea by Will. Yeah. Um, and he said he's generally in favor of us um, using our treasury to diversify into high value NFTs mm -hmm. that give us um, like a strategic advantage in the future. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, everyone's basically on the same page. It's tough. Um, like when I launched NFTX, um, I did, like, you know, I put up like joys and like these kitty founders. Um, and you, you never know, right? Like mm -hmm. um, joys have appreciated, but nothing like the autoglyphs. Like the autoglyphs have appreciated like crazy. Um, and so um, I think, you know, it, it, it would be smart for us to double down on the ones that the shelling point is going to. Another thing I just want to touch on really quickly is I, I know a lot of people um, do get concerned about the long tail NFTs uh, and how some other projects have been managing to scoop those up. Um, I think that that's like a feather that we will want in our cap eventually. But um, like right now, in my opinion, our strength is that we have by far the most punk liquidity um, and autoglyph liquidity. And we'll also have like Avastars and Axies. Um, and in my mind, it's kind of like we're kind of like BitMEX in a sense that like we have so much liquidity for the large assets that we don't have to worry too much about the long tail assets um, in the short term. I don't want to make excuses, uh, but just, you know, I do think we're, we're on the right track here. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we basically have like blue chip NFT liquidity mm -hmm. and yeah, that's exactly. where most it, demand will be. Mm -hmm. So we don't really have to worry about stuff with a little bit of volume or short term volume because there's no. no real culture community around it. Agree, agree. That's a it's a really strong moat. Mm -hmm. And like one thing that people don't really realize is that it, it is a risky thing to do to do a raise for NFTs because imagine like, oh you put joy and then he just like mints a million or whatever. Then like <laughs> NFTX is kind of uh, in a bad position because they gave a whole tranche of a bounty for like something that's valueless. So yeah. it's not just the same as raising for Ether, but I think the risk is aligned to what we're trying to do. So it's like, I, I completely agree that mm -hmm. this is what we should push for. We just have yeah, to and, be sure that we make a good decision on which ones we want to raise for. Yeah, and I don't think we have to go so far at this point as to start like selling off um, NFTs that we don't see having a strategic advantage. Um, but yeah, I, I'll talk to Will about this. Um, I'm glad nobody has um any crazy concerns uh but mostly you know we're focused on v2 uh, and a big thing with version two is that like of course you know my original vision has very much been the hodl vision and like holding these fun tokens um with v2 it's going to be there's gonna be more focus on targeted redemptions and basically um getting that the profit from targeted redemptions because we'll have an added fee and looping lp providers or liquidity providers back into like uh profit sharing of these targeted fees so in that sense vaults which have a higher number like masks will have you know will tend to get more targeted fees because more people will kind of be like browsing through them uh, but yeah i think you know it's, it's good for us to have both it's good for us to hold down this high value um shelling point use case and then also more of like the the large browsing use case sorry i'm rambling a bit it's a and, <laughs> no, I, I, I just want to read out um like what orange just said he's asking if we plan to diversify percentage of the treasury into stable coins and right now there's no concrete plan but it's something that's been discussed before yeah. so it's definitely like on our mind and like i had just said we we need someone to do like active treasury management yeah, and, yeah. I, 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 I think all these things are kind of up to uh, like a controller or treasury manager to uh, work out well. Like, yeah. uh, not just discuss on the uh, on the governance meeting, but actually yeah. like run the numbers and uh, look at historical movements of NFT uh, prices. If, efficiency makes yeah. a huge difference in this market. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess that's something we can look into. Maybe, yep. I don't know, if Will wants to, or maybe we can try and yeah, get a DC, DC investor or somebody that, like... We can just pick it up, uh, like, after this call and, uh, like, cool. move, the, move the discussions forward. Um, all right, so, Nick, um, would you like to do a product overview or what the squad has been doing? Yeah, yeah. So just uh, quickly from our side on uh, version 1.x, which is basically, uh, if you've been on the previous governance calls, we've been working on um, 
a sort of major upgrade to the front end for the NFT X app, uh, which would just make everyone's life a lot easier for minting and redeeming. Uh, so the last few weeks, we've been focusing a lot on infrastructure, uh, which will allow us to implement new features uh, and updates really easily. Uh, and that particularly is important for tying into what Alex and Kiwi are working on uh, with the V2 contracts. So um, I know everyone's kind of hoping for an update as soon as possible. Uh, we are now close to launching the first rollout of the new front end for minting. Uh, and that will just massively improve, like the, well, reduce the friction uh, that there is for minting these NFT uh, vault fund uh, tokens. So uh, that's launching soon. And then after that, we've got a series of updates planned throughout April, which will, uh, I'll have more details on next week, but that will sort of target the uh, redemption and create vault functions as well. So yeah. Uh, expect to see uh, products live shortly um, on NFTX, but yeah, more details next week. Nice. All right. Well, uh, that's great news. Does anyone have uh, any comments on that or anything else they want to talk about? I'll, I'll just jump in again quickly and say that um, to anyone that hasn't had the fortune of um, seeing the mock-ups or the design images for the new front end, it's it's going to be much, much better than what we currently have. So uh, Nick and those guys are doing great work. Yeah, I can attest to that. Yeah, yeah same. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a, a huge difference, but yeah. Yep. Uh, cool, man. All right, so if no one has any questions, that's going to wrap up the call. Uh, thank you to everyone for participating. Uh, it's very important uh, that people are informed and like make decisions with all the information that's available to them and that we tr try to provide. So, yeah, thank you again, and uh, see you next week. Thanks. See you guys. Thanks. Thanks for that.